Hi, it's Martin and Arlo, and today I want to spend some time um, talking about shaping and showing some shaping. Um, if you've been following the videos, you've seen Arlo sort of getting his hands dirty. Uh, he can pre-shape pretty well, and today we're going to work on baguettes a little bit. There's going to be a fair amount of watching him watching me, uh, and we're going to get him involved some too, but we're going to try and keep it kind of short. So, let's just jump in. All right. Um, I've got a bunch of dough, at least for, for our house, it, it looks like a bunch of dough. I've got about maybe 10 kilos, which um, at home feels like a lot. That's yeah. quite a bit of dough, right? Definitely. Okay, over 20 pounds. Um, and I've already pre-shaped um, everything today because um, the pre-shaped form is basically the same whether we're making a tube uh, or, or, or we're making a round. Um, it's very similar to the way that I do final shaping. And I think that for the sake of keeping it as straightforward as possible, um, I'm gonna stick to those basic forms. Um, what else should I say before I start? Maybe I should say that there are a lot of ways to shape. And if you've watched any of these videos and you've watched me shape, you have heard me say that shaping is a destination. How we get there, you know, you can take the scenic route, uh, you can go as fast as possible. Um, my experience has been in the professional bakery and so I tend to take the shortest route because in the bakery we try and get as much done uh, in the shortest amount of time. It's just the nature of bakery work is that we work with a lot of, um, I don't know, we, we move quickly. So, um, all right. So I have some baguettes which are divided and already pre-shaped and I did two different styles of pre-shape. I did a round pre-shape and I did a more tubular or rectangular pre-shape. Um, you can go either way. In my experience, um, I think it's easier sometimes for people in the home environment to work with a round pre-shape for baguettes as opposed to a rectangular pre-shape. And um, if you have questions about that, you can jump into the comments and um, myself and a bunch of other people who are experienced bakers are watching the comments and we're trying to be as helpful as possible as we can. Um, but a lot of baking involves actually doing it. And so it's important to sort of get your mental game, but also just get your hands in there and make some mistakes, which I have made plenty of. Um, so um, this is a like home size baguette. It's about 250 grams. Um, give or take. Uh, in the bakery environment, a lot of baguettes are in the 400 gram range, so these are kind of short. Okay, so come on in here, Anthem. The first one I'll do is, as I said, a baguette. And this baguette was a tubular pre-shape. It was a pre-shape that I made almost like you would make a pan loaf, and you're gonna see me shape some of those. So if you're wondering how I made this pre-shape, stick around. Okay, so I put the dough on the bench. The bench is lightly floured. Um, people have been asking questions about surfaces. What's the best surface? Blah, blah, blah. Um, wood is my favorite surface. Wood is, for me, like the surface that goes with bread. Um, and that having been said, you can shape on just about anything. I don't care for working on a surface. Um, one of our bakers uh, who's answering questions on the hotline, Jonathan Frischtick, said, um, any surface which you can use a bench scraper on, and I thought that was brilliant. Um, so yes, any surface that you can use a bench scraper on is a good surface for working on. My favorite of all is wood, uh, but I don't have wood today. So uh, we have laminate. So let's make a baguette. Maybe I'll just do it without talking once. Maybe that's impossible. <laughs> Maybe I have to talk. Okay, I'm gonna fold it like a letter. I'm basically folding it like a letter. There's my letter. And if you look, you can see that I'm trying to maintain straight lines here. I don't have something that looks like a wave. I want it to be as sort of architectural as possible with square lines. If I can start here and make things even, then when I get to the final phase of elongating it, it's going to be even. So I made my letter, and now I make a little divot, and then I bring it to the leading edge, and I press to seal. That's one way to shape, and that's the way that I've shaped more baguettes than are worth counting. Once I get to that point, I roll for a second in the middle until it's down to about the diameter that I want, 
And then I go in with both hands and I just roll until it's tapered. I go through a little bit of flour. If you've got a little bit of a seam that's opening, that's good. And then we're there. That is about as long as I can make in the home oven. I think it's in the like, yeah, it's like 12 inches. So that's about what I can do at home. And bakeries, uh, we're usually doing about um, 26 inches, you know, 54, 56 centimeters, somewhere in that range. You can see that I don't have a bunch of flour on the bench. You cannot shape on that much flour. It does not work for good bread. Um, for some things which are not shaped or which are just cut and divided, uh, it's okay. But you just need a sheen of dough. Of, uh, sorry, it's a sheen of flour. You need more than a sheen of dough. Okay. This one was a round pre-shape. And you can see that I've got a little bit more space to work with here. I've got a little bit more space to work with here when I'm doing my folds. And I find that some home bakers find that a little bit easier. So. Pat it, and I'm gonna do the same one that you saw me do before. If it feels like it's sticky a little bit, just pick up the dough piece and find a little bit of flour and bring it back. So here's my letter. Kind of in the same place I was before. Now, because I have a little bit more real estate here, I think that I can go down twice, and so let me show you what I'll do. I've got a little divot in the middle, I'm not going to come down all the way the first time, but now I am. So I come all the way down, I press uh, and seal away. Turn the dough over, and if it's a little sticky, I go find some flour, and I come back with that same motion. Hand in the middle, fingers, and heel of my palm against the bench. You want to hear that swishy sound when you're rolling baguettes. If you don't hear that swishy sound, you know that your hand is just floating. And if your hand is just floating, all the pressure of your hand is going onto the dough. And we're not trying to mash anything here. It's really more a motion of rolling it back and forth. So there we are. The seam is right there. The seam is there, faintly visible. And I'm gonna put it on my couche. Um, seam up. I have some baker's linen kicking around. That's what that gray stuff is. If you've been watching, um, I also have some lengths of this canvas, which is just painter's canvas uh, from an art store. And it works really well for holding baguettes. Let me do, uh, let me see here. Maybe I do one more of each kind. Yeah, do one more of each kind briefly. Okay, so here's my round pre-shape, little pat. make a letter and one thing I'll say about shaping is that um, you should pretend that you're good at it like even if you're not good at it and there are days where I am not good at it there are days where I make um, shapes that aren't as pretty as they could be um, but it's one of those tasks and you'll find this is true when you're scoring loaves as well it's good to pretend that you're good at it um, believe that you are and you'll shape better and you'll score better too okay so I've got my little letter form, uh, divot in the middle, and then all the way to the leading edge. Roll it back and forth, and a little bit of taper. There we are. If you see some little inconsistencies in it, uh, don't worry about it. Remember that this is like a balloon that hasn't been blown up. And once the gas begins to fill that structure, it blows up and it becomes a more uniform uh, shape. So don't, uh, don't freak out. I always say that baguettes are like the triple sow cow of baking because um, they sort of combine everything uh, that we want to be good at. And it can take time to get to where, um, to get to where you feel confident. I'll show you one other way to do this. Uh, and we call it, I call it stitching or like the sewing machine method. And you'll see this out there. If you look at some of the videos on the King Arthur YouTube page, um, a lot of professional bakers like this method. Um, and I like it too. 
uh, I tend to move around and, and shape different ways depending on what the dough feels like it needs. Um, so this is like a sewing machine method where the thumb goes in and the, and the heel of the palm seals and I just go down like that. Like I said, lots of paths to the same destination. I think if you go through a board of baguettes, uh, I don't think you're gonna be able to pick out the ones that I see that I shaped like that. All right, so there are some baguettes. Now, the next thing I wanna shape are, let's shape some pan loaves here. Let's see if I can get that one off. Everybody's raring to go here, okay. Two more pan loaves. Okay. So if you're wondering how we do the tubular pre-shape, this is how we do the tubular pre-shape. But I think this is a good method for anybody who's shaping pan bread. Pan bread. Like if the first bread that you make is a dough that's going into a loaf pan, I think this is a pretty good way to do it. So. Dough's on the bench, and what I like to do is begin by bringing in the sides. And if you've watched our video, Arlo and I did a video on our uh, just bread, which is like a pan loaf, you'll see me shaping this exact same way. So I bring the sides in, and now I have a nice square form. And I just start bringing it down, press and seal away, fold, press and push away, like that. You see how that's getting some tension? Arlo, come over here. I want you to do one. Okay. Okay, so there's the first one. Put them in the pan. This is a, some people asked about these pans. This is a Pullman pan. It's the shorter version of a Pullman. I think it's, I'm not going to say the size because I'm going to screw it up and then people are going to be like, that's not what he used. Um, this is a Pullman pan. You'll find them around. It's not a full-size Pullman. Uh, it's a shorter Pullman. Uh, that's about 900 grams of dough in there. Okay, come over here, buddy. Did you watch me do that? Yes. So do you have it memorized, or do you want me to stand over your shoulder? I stand over my shoulder. Stand over your shoulder, okay. You have it, right. and then you're going to bring the sides in, right? Yep. Just like... Yeah, and then press down like you want it to stay there. Yep, and you want to see if you can make those sides as square as possible. Yeah, man. Then... You're... Now from the top, remember, hands as paddles. Like, don't get no magic fingers, hands as paddles. It's a little sticky, right? Yeah, yes. it's a little sticky. Come up and press and seal away. Yep, that's good. And you don't have to press, like, you only have to press with the amount of pressure that it takes to seal it. You don't have to stick your fingers into the dough. So up and press and seal. Yep, keep doing that until you're all the way down. Um, Want to do one more? Yeah. Or you can just take your heel and seal your, the heel of your hand and seal that. So turn over here. Okay. And then just go in there and just seal it like that. Yep, just as hard as it, only as hard as it will take to seal it. It's like if you press too hard, it will get sticky. You see what I mean? Yeah, there you go. Do you see how that, you got a lot more tender with your touch. That was perfect. Yeah, and then drop that sucker in there. Is there a certain way you should pick it up or not? Nah. Just, just get it in there. Is it stuck a little bit? It's okay. So you're putting it in there, seam down, which is perfect. Now, once it's in there, look in there, Anthem. Do you see how it looks a little lumpy? It's not quite right, right? Mm -hmm. Do you see how the end's coming up? Wait, get your hand out of there so she can see. Do you see how this is up? Watch this. Just fix it. And then get your knuckles in there and press it down. No one's gonna know the difference between our loaves, promise you. It's gonna rise and be perfect. Okay, I'm gonna do this last one quickly. Yep because I'm trying to make this video a little bit shorter for folks. Okay, so one more time. Pan loaf. I've got kind of a round mass of dough. I come in from the sides, press and seal. I'm degassing as I touch it just a little bit, and then I come down from the top. Boop, boop, boop. Don't. If you see these rounds at the end, some, sometimes those aren't that attractive, but what you can do is just come down with your hands and kind of just give them a little bit of a chop and everybody's gone, you're good to go, boom. Dough goes in the pan, and I give it a little bit of a press just to make sure that it's nice and even in there, and then I set it aside to proof. Okay, next, 
Let me get this over here. We got a few more to shape. <laughs> Just a few, right? Just a few. Okay. All right. I'm gonna set this here. And just gonna put this on the counter. A little bit of flour. I'm flouring this couche because it hasn't been used that much, and so you want to make sure that you have some flour in there, otherwise you are going to stick. Set these guys aside. Okay, so what I want to do is show Bull and Batard. Did I say Bull and Batard? Yes, Bull and Batard. Yes, okay. So, I will we bring two more of those over here and just handle them gently because at this point we're, we're trying to be real gentle with them. And that board is just kind of balanced on there, so be careful. Okay, if you've watched us shape rolls, if you've watched us pre-shape round, uh, you'll recognize what I'm going to do here. So, working from the outside, folding to the middle, outside to middle, outside to middle. And I'm just going around until I feel like there's some tension in it. And then I turn it around or over. And then I give it a little bit of tension. Nice round form. Do a couple more. Outside to middle. Should I start doing one too? Uh, hold on one second. Okay. Outside to middle. Outside to middle. Turn it over and round. Uh, why don't you start on that one, Arlo, and then uh, do that one, and then I'm going to start. I'm going to do a batard. I'll do some batards real quick. If you are watching the video and you're thinking, man, I'm glad they covered that, but I wish they would cover that other thing. I wish they would do a video about that other thing or that other dough or that recipe or process or shaping technique or whatever it is. Please list it in the comments and we're listening and we're looking for ideas because we're only uh, so creative here. <laughs> okay, Should now you're good. Out? Yeah, you're good there. Now, I want you to do this. I want you to do this shape that we've done a little bit where um, you pull towards you. Not as good, but okay. Try this, try this. Well, you make the little um, fence and you turn it. You wanna try the, you wanna do the other one? Sure, so it's like. Okay, that's good. Let it move a little bit in your hand, just a little bit, as you're turning it. Wait, I'll try this. So as you're pulling it, let it move around. See how it's rolling in my hands yeah. just a little bit? Try and keep it to where the seam is on the bottom, but you yeah. can move like that, yeah. So. You feel it, feel the tension of the surface? Definitely. Yeah, okay, so keep moving it and let it travel a little bit. Watch me. Let it move some. So. Put that other hand in there. Yep, yep. And if you're having problems with that technique, so set that one aside. If you're having problems with that technique, do this one. Hands as a fence, pull it towards you until you still see it start to tension and then turn it like that. You get a nice, strong form. Okay. All right, there are those. Now, in the little bit of time I have left here, what I want to do is I want to show you, um, I want to show you batard. So we've done pan loaf, we've done some baguettes, kind of like, this is like a quick hit on each of these shapes. We've done pan loaf, we've done some baguettes, we did some bulls here, and now I'm going to show you batard. Okay. So, Lots of ways to shape a batard, uh, just like with everything else. Let me show you one method, and then uh, maybe I'll do a couple repeats so you can see it. So, batard. I start at the top, and I come down. Press gently to seal. Now I have these kind of dough shoulders that I bring in, like that. Press to seal. I have a relatively uniform form. It's kind of a mirror of itself on either side, which is what I want. And I start at the top, I come down, press to seal. Press to seal, press to seal. And so I've kind of got this tubular shape right now, which is what I want. And now the only part that remains is to give it a little bit of taper. Like that. That wasn't my best one. Let me try another one. It's gonna come out in the wash. You won't know that that one wasn't my favorite one. No one will know, but I will know. So, <laughs> no one but me. Okay. Yeah, you might know too, huh? Okay. Maybe, maybe. All right. 
top down, shoulders in. Bring this head down. Sometimes if it looks a little flabby here, I'll fold it in and I'll turn it over. Basically, I'm trying to get to that tubular sort of form. That's okay. We gotta bake all this bread, getting the oven warmed up. Okay, I had that kind of tubular form and now I just tension it some. bit of flour on it before I put it on the couche and we're good to go. Let me get a couple more here. I think I have two more. All right. Six minutes. Okay, here we go. Tubular form. And then I just tension it. I think people are going to tell me to slow down. <laughs> I should try one slow, except, like I said with shaping, you kind of have to pretend that you know what you're doing because it will enable your hands to move at a pace which uh, is appropriate for shaping. If you move too slowly when you're shaping, you're going to find yourself getting stuck in the dough. The good news here is that um, baking is fun, practice is fun, and even dough or bread, which doesn't have as much beauty as you might like, uh, is edible. And... Tastes good. Tastes good, exactly, who cares? Okay, so I got that kind of tubular form. I start in the middle and I taper. There we go. And I'm gonna put it on the couche with the seam side up. And these will be ready to load in maybe an hour or so. Uh, we gotta fit all this stuff in the, in the oven. Okay, I hope that was helpful. It felt like a little bit of a sprint, but Definitely. maybe that's because we've been making longer videos. Um, if there's something that you want to see or something you'd like to see again, uh, or slower, or in a different way, or explain differently, just speak up. Um, we're here. We're not going anywhere, as it would seem. Uh, so um, we're glad that you could join us today, and we look forward to seeing you back here again soon. Cheers.